In this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about the snare drum. We're going to talk about the different components and what their functions are. We're going to talk about the snare stand and how that works, how to set it up and get everything going. And then we're going to talk about tuning. We're going to talk about the snare drum first. Now, all drums have shells, the main part right here on the side of the drum. Snare drums have two heads, a top head that we call the batter head because this is the side that you hit with the sticks or the brushes and a bottom head which is called the resonant head or in the case of the snare drum specifically it's called the snare side head. And the reason why is because snare drums have these snare wires. All drums have what's called a counter hoop, uh, sometimes referred to as a rim. And then th through these holes in the counter hoop are these tension rods and these are used to change the tension of the head. They go into the lugs here. Some drums have a single lug that holds the top and bottom uh, tension rod. Uh, other things are, are just one lug at a time or tube lugs. There's all kinds of different lugs you see. Snare drums are also unique in that they have this mechanism called a throw-off. There are several different types of throw-offs on the market. They can be uh, engaged like this or disengaged, which then drops the snares off of the bottom head so that you don't hear the sound of the snares. Sometimes they drop down from the drum. Sometimes there's a mechanism that turns to the side. Sometimes it clips up and gets pulled back down. That mechanism controls the sound of the snare wires. This is a snare drum stand. It comes in two parts, a top and a bottom, which we call the base. Pretty much all stands look like this. Uh, they have three legs, and for the most part, you can, uh, once you loosen the thumb screw here, you can uh, just pull them open like this. You don't want to go too far and open them all the way because that increases the footprint and can get in the way of your feet. So just right about here, a nice uh, comfortable spot. And then when you tighten it, don't over tighten it because these screws can definitely strip out. Onto the top part of the stand, we have the post, which goes into the base. We have the tilting mechanism here, which is controlled by this thumb screw or wing nut. Uh, and then up top you have the basket, which consists of the arm and the claw. The adjustment of this basket is done by this mechanism here, which can um, tighten to make it smaller or loosen to make it bigger. Now let's assemble the stand. Uh, before we do that, you want to make sure that you have uh, pretty close to a right angle here with this tilting mechanism because you don't want to have it angled right when you put the drum in. So uh, about 90 degrees there is good. Then you can put it in the base and then use this wing nut to tighten it. Uh, again, do not over tighten the wing nuts. They will strip and then you'll have to replace them or potentially the whole stand. Then when you open the basket, make sure it's loose enough to fit the drum with no problem, you can just set it right in there. Now we're going to set the snare drum into the basket, but before you do, remember that the bottom head is very thin, and if you set it off center and you hit one of those claws, it's likely that the claw will either dent or even potentially break the bottom head. So make sure that the basket is open wide enough that you can just set the drum all the way in. We mentioned adjusting the height of the snare drum already and we talked about it a little bit with the practice pad being on a drum, but again I want to emphasize how important it is to have the snare drum at a comfortable height for when you're playing. So once you find that height and you play a little bit on it and, and it feels good to you, you can mark it down here with a sharpie or a piece of tape so that you know exactly the same height every single time you use it. The final adjustment to the snare drum stand is closing the basket. Now, don't over tighten the basket on the bottom of the drum because it'll put unnecessary tension on that hoop. But you want it tight enough that all of the rubber protectors on the claws are uh, underneath the drum. You don't want the drum sitting right on the metal part of the basket. And then you just want to have it tight enough that it's touching 
lightly all the way around so that if you or somebody else bumps it, the drum's not going to fall off the stand. So our snare drum is all set up. It's at the right height. Everything is adjusted. We're almost ready to play it, but first we have to learn how to tune the drum. This is one of the most important aspects of drumming because it's what gives you your sound and it's what gives the feel to the drum. The amount of rebound you get has to do with how it's tuned. Don't settle for a drum that doesn't sound good and just play it. Take the proper steps that you need to take to get it to sound good. Don't just settle for a bad sounding drum.